Now, one subject we can guarantee gets you going on rogue traders is the illegal trade in puppies. It's hard to imagine what motivates someone to sell dogs in bulk to owners who can be taking home problems they could never have imagined. Difficult to understand until you see the sums of money involved. With a byproduct of heartbreak and suffering on a commercial scale. That's why we're determined to do something about it. No animal lover would ever buy a dog from a place that looks like this. No, but industrial puppy farms aren't the only way disreputable puppy sellers do business. Check out these ads. That's more like it. Cosy home furnishings, private cellar, that's what you want. Not a big compound full of cages. They look comfy and cosy, but the reality is not so rosy. Take this one. It wasn't posted by a private seller called Derek at all, but by this man, Cameron Dorbin Barnett. The internet provides a cushion between him and his customers. They see puppies to hug on sofas and rugs, which means he never has to furnish them with the truth. Rebecca came across Cameron in January after responding to an advert selling a puppy posted by a private seller, apparently called Sarah P. But Rebecca has owned Cavaliers for years and knew that with this pup there was something most definitely up. He looked like a really unhappy puppy. The description was quite concerning. It said that he had a grade three heart murmur and hopefully it would fade over time. Rebecca was concerned for the puppy's well-being. She knows it's unusual for heart murmurs to fade, so she decided to check him out and even more alarm bells started to ring. The address they gave me didn't exist. So how were you expected to, to well, find the place? He said to give him a call when I got to a certain postcode. Rebecca was eventually directed to a nearby farm where she met not Sarah P, but Cameron. She asked him about the heart murmur. It was really skimmed over. He just didn't claim to know anything about it. And sometimes cavaliers have murmurs and, you know, that was the extent of it. What was the impression you were getting at that stage? I hear his lying. Rebecca knew she might be taking on a sick puppy, but she was worried about him. So she bought him for £300, renaming him Milo. And just days after getting him home, it was obvious. She'd been right to be concerned. Milo was rushed to hospital. He went downhill really fast and um, they had to put him on oxygen and pump him with antibiotics. Milo was diagnosed with kennel cough, a suspected parasitic infection and a life-threatening heart condition. He also hadn't been microchipped, which is against the law. I just thought I was just going to lose him straight away. Thankfully, he got to the vets in the nick of time, but in total, it will take around £8,000 of treatment. Yes, you heard that right. £8,000, including open chest surgery to keep him alive. So, the advice, and it's very good advice, is that if you have any suspicions about anywhere selling dogs, then you don't buy one. We have a big bag full of suspicions about Cameron. Guess what we're about to do? What are we going to do? We're going to buy a puppy. You see, it's simply the only way we can find out for ourselves how Cameron is doing business. We respond to this advert as professional consumer journalists, so we are conducting a completely dispassionate test purchase. Oh, look at their little faces. Oh, sorry about that. These are golden doodles, a golden retriever and poodle mix. Etymologically, it should, of course, be either a goodle or a pood retriever, depending on who was standing where when it happened. We don't know that detail. So the team sets off to see a man about a godondle retrieveler. We pick up fashion guru and expert witness vet Simon Thomas along the way. He is a man who knows about dogs and how they should be sold. The ad has been posted by a Derek W in Lincolnshire. He's listed as a private seller, which according to the website's rules means these puppies should be pets, not bred for the purposes of making a profit. Come out of their driveway. Go down there about 80 yards. Like Rebecca, we're told to drive to a postcode and then we're redirected to a nearby farm. And here we meet Ronnie. Uh, 
Come on in. Come meet our babies. <gasps> oh. 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 Wave your head. Trim. Hiya. Hiya. And Cameron. <laughs> You're right. Hi, Cameron, nice to meet you. But no Derek. Like an abacus dipped in treacle, it doesn't add up. Yeah. We didn't know what to price them yeah. because these are our pets. We're clearly given the impression the puppies are the one-off litter of a family pet. I tell you what, for a first time, man, she is bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're really impressed with her. You're gonna do it again, or? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe next year. Yeah. Maybe when the weather's a bit warmer. But Simon's not convinced. She's not interested in her litter at all. It's a sign she might not be the real mum. His biggest concern, however, is the puppies. You seem a bit scared. Thinking, who are these people and why are all my siblings disappearing slowly? Aww. These puppies are not acting like puppies. Sleepy little girl. Don't get it wrong, you've come in when they're pretty sleepy and tired. You'll see, when you get home, they are nuts. They run around in circles for about an hour. So have they been running around the lot this morning? Yes. We're not buying what they say, but we are buying a puppy. We pay £725 and we call her BB. See? Her behaviour is so unusual, we get her checked out right away. This dog's posture is saying, I'm really scared of the world. She's terrified, really. My immediate overriding concern is why is she so quiet and subdued? I've had about two wags out of her tail. She's really not shown the sort of bright, vigorous response you'd expect with a, a young puppy. This is kind of the quietest puppy that you'd ever meet. Later that evening, BB takes a turn for the worse. Her uh, tummy's getting bigger every time I feel it. She's definitely breathing at least twice as fast as she should be. She's put on a drip, and Simon runs a series of tests on her blood. The results are worrying. So we've got a raised white blood cell count, which would confirm our suspicion that all is not well and we've got an infection. So, two sick doggies. It's very concerning. By the way, please don't confuse Lincolnshire-based Cameron Dorbin Barnett with any other puppy traders who may have the same or similar names. You never know. I expect people, Nikki, are getting in touch about that story, are they not? Yeah, they are. Back to road traders. Lincolnshire, wide open spaces, punctuated by the odd farmyard, exactly where you might expect to go to buy a happy, healthy, waggy-tailed pup. That's not what we've got from Cameron Dorban Barnett. Just hours after leaving Cameron's farm, we discover our puppy, BB, is seriously ill. So we've got a raised white blood cell count, which would confirm our suspicion that all is not well and we've got an infection. She's really not shown the sort of bright, vigorous response you'd expect with a, a young puppy. This is kind of the quietest puppy that you'd ever meet. Thankfully, with some medicine and TLC, by morning, she's beginning to improve. But a few weeks later, further test results show how lucky she was. Simon, I know you've carried out tests on BB. What have they revealed? The most important and worrying thing was that she was confirmed as having a, a heavy infestation with a parasite called Giardia. How serious can Giardia be? Without treatment, she might have become very ill indeed or even perhaps have died. Giardia is usually a sign of unhygienic conditions and it is contagious. Happily, BB's made a full recovery. Hello, Hi. how are you? You all right? Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. She's now settling into her new home with Simon's son, Lawrence, and his daughter-in-law, Anna. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. You seem better. You seem... Much better. Yes. Can you go inside? Yes, good fun. I think I need a wash. <laughs> so tell me about the, the progress that you've seen then in, uh, <laughs> in BB over the last couple of weeks. When she first arrived, she was very, very quiet, kept herself to herself and didn't know how to play with toys, but it's definitely just taken her that little bit longer mm -hmm. to get used to everything. Well, I think she's in the right place. <laughs> look at her now, look. Look at you. And is she going to get much bigger? A lot bigger. A lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. It's great that BB's doing so well, but we are concerned about the other dogs we saw on the farm. 
So we called Cameron back to let him know how sick the puppy he sold us has been. Apparently it's quite contagious. Um, I rang my vet and spoke to him and he said it, it is contagious, but it's not severely contagious. And he said it could come from stress, it could be anything that it could cause it. You've got to think where you live, the water could be different. Make sure that your vet is not trying to, I hate to say it, but some vets you do have to treat them a little bit like a mechanic. They are, at the end of the day, still a business. I hate that they do try and bits you off. Five years to qualify, starting salary 30k, they're clearly only in it for the money. Now, let's have a look at the scale of this thing. At times like these, there is no substitute for a cork board and knitting supplies. Despite giving customers the impression he's selling the litter of a family pet, in just six weeks, we link 22 adverts, 10 different breeds, 11 different names and seven different phone numbers to Cameron. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Oh, yeah, hello. The Golden Doodle Puppies. Right, I can't do anything today, but I can tomorrow. The Schnauzer Puppies. Yeah. A Dachshund Puppy. Is that you? Yeah. German Shepherd Puppies online. Yeah. The whole thing starts to unravel like a ball of wool in a cat's paw, if cats are your thing. Who am I talking to? Tom. Have I come through to Dada? Yeah. Who am I speaking to? Callum. This is the doghouse, and Cameron is in it. The lies keep stacking up. A few weeks later, we return to the farm to see these golden retriever puppies advertised as being sold by Lynn. And on the same day, we also see these particularly sad-looking miniature schnauzer puppies advertised under the mysterious name of R. We've linked them via the ad selling BB. Let's just acquaint ourselves with a spot of dog law. If you want to sell dogs, there are a couple of things you might need. Firstly, a pet shop licence. If you're selling animals as pets, then you need to get one of these from the council, unless you're selling puppies from your own pet dog or pedigree dogs you've bred. Now, Cameron used to have one of these, but doesn't anymore. A breeder's licence. If you run a business breeding and selling dogs, or you breed five or more litters a year and sell any of the puppies, you need a breeder's licence. Again, Cameron used to have one, he hasn't now. It's dog law! We ask Cameron outright if he's breeding dogs. But we don't get a straight answer. This is what he tells one of the teams. Yeah. So do, do you breed? Are you a breeder? I'm not a breeder, but I have them now and then. Like... And later the same day, this is what he tells the other. Yeah. You're a licensed nice breeder? Yeah. Hi, little one. Let me clear this up for you, because it's really very simple. This is an illegal business. He is breeding dogs, but he hasn't got the licence he needs to do so. That's not the only thing worrying us about Cameron's operation. She's got a little crusty nose. Oh. Yeah, it's a farm here, so like I say, she, she goes in the chicken coop and steals the eggs and eats chicken. We show our footage to expert witness vet Simon. This considerably increases the risk that the puppy might be ill after you've bought it. I typed out a paper and on the back I put all things that potentially could go wrong but are not that major. Sometimes you get a little bit of blood in the poo. It's all normal things, but to a first-time dog owner it might seem quite scary. It's not normal for dogs to have blood in their poo. The whole stress of driving them home and new environment, it can upset them and it, mm. can, do you know, it can give them a little stomach up, up, upset. Right. Don't rush and take them to the vet straight away. Mm. Sometimes just let them settle in. If we'd followed that advice, BB could have died. Cameron is lying through his teeth. So, the dog has the rabbit in its sights. Cameron is using false names and adverts to pretend to be a loving pet owner who's had a windfall of puppies to share. In fact, it's nothing more than a business, an illegal business, that has no place at all in the UK, but seems to be booming. The boom is about to go bust. In tonight's Rogue Traders, we've been following a lead which pins the title Illegal Puppy Dealer firmly onto the forehead of Cameron Dorbin Barnett of Lincolnshire. He used to sell puppies in Norfolk until he surrendered his licence there. Now he's gone north. Sadly, we've seen one of his dogs nearly go south in front of our very eyes. Cameron Dorbin Barnett is illegally selling puppies for profit. 
He tells his customers he's not running a business, but in just six weeks, we've linked 22 ads using 11 different aliases and seven phone numbers to his farm. And the puppy he sold us was seriously ill. Uh, tummy's getting bigger every time I feel it. She's definitely breathing at least twice as fast as she should be. He's misleading his customers, flying in the face of the law, and we think it's time he stopped. And that's why we're on our way now to Cameron's farm, um, to let him know we know what he's doing uh, and how he's operating. We've responded to yet another ad, again posing as customers. OK, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Cameron, Matt all right, BBC Road Traders. You're running an illegal puppy operation here, aren't you? You're selling, yeah, you're selling, private property. you're selling, you're selling dogs uh, by the property. dozen, but you're selling dogs by the dozen, dogs yeah. which go into people's homes. Do you mind if we do which are, yeah. Yeah. To are you coming? The cameras there. I do not give permission. I'm calling. I, I tell you, which one is it going to be? Do you want us to come in or go? Wait there, Lee. Are you coming to talk to us, Cameron? We wait. But as night falls, it's clear Cameron isn't willing to answer our questions. So, instead, we decide to take a look around the perimeter of the farm for any evidence of the puppies. Listen. We're just behind the farm here. And we can hear that behind that fence... There's certainly a number of dogs. I can see through just a crack there. <laughs> There's a very big dog in there. Uh, and through the crack in the fence there, I can see a line of kennels. And uh, it, from what I can see, it seems to run the length of this fence. Unfortunately, it's too dark for the cameras. Inside, all I can see is mesh cages on their land, what looks like an, in, an industrial kennels that's running here. But from the adverts, you think they're family pets. And that is exactly the way puppy dealers now have stepped up their game to fool you into thinking you're buying a family pet when, in fact, what you've got in there is an industrial kennel. It's a huge compound. You'd never know about that if you're buying your puppy off the lino in there, like we did. Since then, Cameron's been in touch to tell us that he works hard to support dog rescues, to save the lives and help to rehabilitate abused dogs, and that he has monthly visits from a vet who's happy with the condition of his animals. Cameron also said trading standards have visited too and found his conditions to be excellent. He says he invited us back on a number of occasions to view his kennels and dogs, but that we've refused. Well, Cameron, the reason is simple. You're making out to potential owners that they are buying from a series of family homes hidden behind fake names. You're selling dogs illegally without a licence. What condition the kennels are in now is neither here nor there. They shouldn't exist. But, we are glad to say, very much in existence, despite a close shave, is BB here with Simon, Lawrence and Anna. How are you doing, Lawrence? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Where's my licky welcome? Where's my licky welcome? <laughs> you are gorgeous, aren't you? Now, I understand no longer BB. There's been a change. Yes, yes, she's been rechristened as Coco now. And how is she getting on? Well, as you can see, very much happier than she was when we first got her, but we're loving having her in our lives. Well, I'm really pleased to see she's got such a good home. Great to see you guys. The government is tightening up rules uh, on puppy breeders. Anybody watching who's considering getting a new puppy, Simon, put us in the picture. What should they do? See the puppy with their mother. Check out the health of the puppy. Ask questions. Don't make a snap decision and be just caught with a cute puppy. Yeah. Check out the advice on the websites. Dogs Trust, Kennel Club got good websites to advise you on buying a puppy. Yeah, and don't rush into it. That's the don't key, isn't it? Don't make a snap decision. OK, don't... Simon, thank Puppies you. Puppies are lovely, but... Yes, they certainly are. <laughs> Simon, thank you so much. Thank you.